go test and test and test and one two three are we recorded on the mikey t shout out to uncle mike mikey t he's off to japan okay i think we're good we've got the green light we'll let these cars go ahead we'll pull out in front oh no we won't pull out in front of the learner we're in park not drive but we do need to get out we need to find a little gap here when it is safe to do so check in our mirrors of course and our rear view mirror at all times and it looks like we're going to have a clearance here and we're off we are off we are starting today's q a the last one of these performed very well and i really enjoy doing q a's especially when the cues are good so i get you guys to ask me questions on instagram i do the little question box if you don't already follow me on instagram please do at louis armstrong seven and get the questions asked there. That's the best way to do it. Okay, guys, so the first question today is from Big Joey Fishburn. Big Joey is actually on my creator club. He's from Newcastle, so big shout out to him. And thanks for the question. His question is, how to build a resilient mindset? And that's a very, very good question. And that kind of follows up to what I was talking about yesterday in yesterday's video about how I think that it was actually my mental toughness that got me through the marathon rather than, for, than my physical. So to build a strong mind, I would say it comes from experience. It comes from, from age. I think the older you get, the more mentally strong you become. And ways to build a strong mind is to put yourself through pain, controlled pain, I would say to test yourself, to see what you're capable of. So examples that come to mind when I'm thinking about this right now is, number one, ice bath. Can you go and sit in an ice bath for three or five minutes? Your body can definitely do it. You're not gonna die of hypothermia in five minutes, but it's in the mind. Can your mind hold you there and keep you there? And you know that that pain is gonna be temporary. Next thing I'm thinking, these all kind of relate to me, how I've built mental toughness running on a treadmill. So you could put the treadmill nice and fast and run for five minutes, you could run for 10 minutes, you could run for 20 minutes. You could have it on a very fast setting. And when your mind is telling you, let's get off, this is uncomfortable, this isn't easy, let's press the button to slow it down, you stay on and you keep running until you have to stop. You have to push through those boundaries and keep pushing and that's how you build mental resilience, I think. Other things like fasting, do a 24 hour fast, do a 48 hour fast, do a 72 hour fast. Your mind's telling you that you're hungry, your stomach's growling, you feel uncomfortable. You know that you could just go and eat something delicious and the pain would come to an end so easily. But you know that there's huge benefits to fasting and it's also just a little, a mental game to have with yourself. So I think things like that build mental toughness. Again, how do you cope with certain situations, stressful situations? Do you, are you able to take a step back? Are you able to breathe, relax and think, okay, let's, find a solution here rather than panicking. All of these things, I think, compounded build to mental toughness. So really good question. I'm happy we started with that one. Let's hope all the questions are as good as that one. Next question, what is the best pair of running shoes that I own? The Nike Alpha Flies performed extremely well during the marathon, so I was happy with that. I really, really like the ON Cloud Eclipse. And I also like hawkers. You can't go wrong with a pair of hawkers. I've just ordered a pair of Clifton Nines. So hawkers are really good for every day, nonstop. You're not gonna get any, hawkers are just a staple, but probably the best in performance wise, the Nike Alpha Flies, which I use for the marathon. So someone said half marathon, full marathon, ultra marathon. I've ticked all of them off. Although I would love to do the ultra marathon again, a lot, a lot faster. I think me and Kev took it way too easy, to be honest, in Ibiza. The next challenge for me is definitely gonna be a high rocks. I'm gonna go for a high rocks and I'm gonna go for a, a fast marathon. I'm thinking like a 3.30 marathon with a bit of training or even a 3.20 marathon with a bit of training and a program. And I'm definitely gonna start competing in high rocks. Once uh, I'm gonna go, well, I'll tell you my plans. I'm going somewhere different. I'm gonna start high rocks training, get used to the movements, and then we'll go, we'll take a deep dive into high rocks and hopefully become obsessed with it. Someone says, wow, this is lovely by the way, caramel latte extra hot, normal cow's milk, probably fucked me up later, but never mind. No question, but can I just say, Madrid did you well, you look amazing. Thank you very much, I really appreciate that. Change the environment. If you're having problems, if you're struggling, if you're stuck in a bad cycle, change the environment. Did I ever think I could make this progress when I was leaving Ibiza? 
Um, honestly, no. I didn't know I was capable of doing any of this. I didn't know I was capable of not drinking a beer. I'm now 70 days sober, just over 70 days. I don't even crave beers anymore, which is really good. I know I didn't think I was capable of this, but I'm so happy that I gave it my best shot and now we're here. So very, very happy, honestly. When am I seeing Uncle Mike and Rob next? That's a good question. We're stuck in a little bit of traffic here, folks. So just paying attention. We'll just stay in this lane. Can't be asked to move. Um, Mike is going to Japan. I'm going somewhere next week. Hopefully on the way back from the place that I'm going next week, I'll be able to stop by in Dubai and go and see Uncle Mike. And then I'm probably gonna go to Marbella for the majority of the summer. So I'll be with Rob all summer. And I believe if things haven't changed, Uncle Mike plans to be in Marbella for most of the summer too. So me, Mike and Rob in Marbella all summer, that'll be a vibe. Can't wait for that. What app do you use to track your days sober? It's called Days Since on the App Store. And yes, it's free, very good. Can track it you can track all sorts of progress on it would you do an open relationship absolutely not never ever i am literally the most jealous person in the whole world and i can't think of anything worse than someone else fudging my girlfriend oh i would probably kill them i'm literally the most jealous person ever so open relationship absolutely not what was my meal before the marathon as you saw guys i made kind of overnight oats in a couple of glasses that were in the hotel. So I used some just normal oats, some lactose-free cow's milk, put them in the fridge overnight in the mini bar. And then I had some blueberries, you know, some blackberries and some raspberries. And that was it. Two cups before uh, about an hour and a half before I started running. And it did me well, very well. Do I ever see myself drinking again? That's a very good question. And like I've said in the previous video, I think about this almost every day. I'm definitely gonna try and hit 100 days sober. That would be an amazing achievement. Um, and then I'll see how I go after that. Of course, I wanna have some balance over the summer, especially if I'm in Marbella with the boys and we've been working hard, we've done a good workout. We're sitting at sunset somewhere in a ice cold crispy beer. Oof, mama, oof. Yes, I will be drinking again. I'll do 100 days sober and then we'll see where we take it from there. And I'll see how the, once I introduce drinking again into my life, I'll see how it impacts my life. And if I see too many negative side effects, or if I see no positives, then I'll just completely cut it out again. I don't think there's, I'm not missing it that much, but I think I might miss it on a summer's night when I'm parked up with Rob and Uncle Mike in my beer. So let's see, let's see. But I will drink again, probably. I'm definitely gonna try it and see how it affects me, impacts me. Lots of questions about running shoes. I will probably do a full video on this. People are complaining about bad knees and stuff. Again, if you're running, the last thing you want is an injury because it makes everything so much worse. So you do need to protect your knees and I definitely recommend investing in a good pair of running shoes because that's gonna prevent injury. But I do always recommend, especially for beginners, a pair of hawkers. They've got nice, big, clumpy, fluffy soles that protect your knees and feet and all that stuff. So hawker, Clifton's, Hocker, Bondi's, they're all good runners for beginners if you want to protect your knees. But I'll probably do a full video on different types of running shoes. Has this 30 day experiment helped you with the direction to take your YouTube channel? Um, this 30 day experiment has been interesting. My subscribers are finally going up, which is good. And it's just very interesting to see the type of content that performs well. Normally the things that I expect to perform well don't do so well. And the things that I don't expect to do well, do do well. So yeah, I guess I'm just gonna keep going with this. Regular videos, maybe three videos, four videos a week. I would love to do daily videos. If you guys want me to continue with the daily videos, then please let me know. Um, I mean, I can try my best. Sorry, I got distracted out the window there. Yeah, guys, I don't know. Like, I'm really happy with how things are going. And I, I can't believe the amount of love and support you guys are giving me on all the videos. It, means the world to me. So thank you so much. And I mean, I'm gonna analyze all the videos at the end of the 30 days. I think I've got like four, four videos left. We'll see how we're looking. And then from there, I'll decide what to do. But please give me feedback in the comments because that does help me make my decisions a lot easier. 
Obviously, it's important that I know what you guys like to watch and what you guys don't like to watch. Would I let a guy pipe me off? Absolutely not. What a ridiculous question. Who even asks that? Will I move back to Ibiza for the summer? Could it potentially ruin my results? Absolutely, it would ruin my results, so I will not be moving back to Ibiza for the summer. I'll go over for like a couple of sends every now and then, whenever, whenever the whole squad's there. I'll go for like two or three days. But I'm certainly not moving back there because I'll just fall straight back into that naughty old trap of partying every day. We don't want that. We're grinding every day. How much money do I make per month? Good question. If you guys join the Crate Club, my inner circle, if you will, I've got 25 handsome young gentlemen in there now, and they're all absolutely killing it. You can find out all this stuff because I'm very honest and I tell people and try and help people. Create a club link is down below in the description, but I'm actually gonna do a video. We're going now to meet Ronaldo. Ronaldo's really good at finance. He's studying finance at uni and he's going to work for a big bank when he graduates. So we're gonna go and analyze my finances. I'm gonna do a video on how much I spend. My friend Tom did a video on Instagram, how much he spends in a month living in Madrid. So I'm gonna do how much I spend in a month living in Madrid, in Madrid, and I'll put it on YouTube for you guys. I think it's interesting. I definitely need to improve a few things, let's say. So let's see how we go. That scooter's just nearly knocked my wing mirror off. The Raji, will I ever go back to the UK? Yes, I'll go back to the UK probably before the summer, just to say hello to my family. Make sure everyone's okay, because I do miss my family. Um, but that's probably gonna be the only reason that I'll ever be going back to the UK. I do not want to live there. Do I ever suffer from FOMO? <laughs> For those that don't know what FOMO is, fear of missing out. Yes, I have the worst FOMO ever. That's the reason why I never stayed in my house once in a beefer and I went out every night just in case I was missing something. But the truth is I wasn't missing nothing. Nothing. And now that I've realized that I'm not missing anything and that I'm so much happier and content in my house, making good videos, making good content, going to the gym, eating healthy, the fear of missing out has completely disappeared. I couldn't give it about a party. I mean, if the whole squad is rolling up to a party and I'm not there, then yes, I'm gonna be jealous. But for little sends here and there, like living in Dubai, all of that stuff, I'm not missing out. I'm very happy, I'm very content with my own life especially right now. I think in the past I had a fear of missing out and that's why I always like to drink and party and say yes to everything. But now I have so much more pleasure telling people no, I'm not going to do that silly activity with you drinking alcohol. <laughs> I'm joking, but yeah, no more FOMO. It depends. If there was a big squad going to an event and I wasn't there, then yes, I would have a fear of missing out. Do I regret not doing anything when I was younger? Honestly, no. I have no regrets, ever. If I've made a mistake, then I'll pay the consequences for making that mistake and we'll have to move past it and hopefully I'll learn from it and hopefully I don't make that mistake again. I mean, some things I probably could have handled better or done slightly differently in my life, which I do kind of think about every now and then. Certain relationships with certain people that I could have just handled a little bit better. But other than that, I have no regrets now. And um, the reason I'm here today in this position is because of the life and the decisions that I chose to make. So no regrets. Would I do a little run-in series? Guys, let me know if you like the run-in videos or not because some of the run-in videos do good, some of them do absolutely shite. And also we're lost, no we're not. Some of the videos do good on running, some of them do shit. So let me know if you like the running videos or not. I think I would like to go for Nick Bear. Nick Bear needs some competition in his life. He's too big, he's too fast, he's too strong. So I need to go and unlock my true potential to come after Nick Bear, give him some competition. And I'm a big fan of Nick, by the way. So let me know. Um, someone's asking if I would do a sub 25K. I'm literally thinking about doing that this weekend on a track. I think I'll do it on a track. Never ran on a track before. So yeah, let me know if you want to run in series. I mean, I could do an, my next marathon prep. I could do a high rocks prep series. Let me know what type of series you want to see. Final question, what, what do you think makes a good human being? Very good question. These types of questions I need to have a little think about. But for me, to be a good human being, 
This is how I live my life. I, I think I'm a good human being, or I try to be a good human being. I don't want to upset anyone. I, don't, I wouldn't go out my way to tell someone they're fat or their makeup looks shit or I don't like their outfit. I like to try and make people feel good. And I think if you can go about your day trying to help people, if you've got the time to, if you've got the capability to help people, if you've got the capability to make people feel good, give them a compliment, make them feel nice, make them feel loved, then I think you're a good person. You're a good human being. And I think if you're compassionate and you're empathetic, so if you can feel how other people might feel, I think that's so important. I, it's probably a down, downside of me is that I feel too much for other people. I worry about other people. I'm always concerned about how they're feeling and sometimes I put other people before myself, which can set me back a little bit every now and then. But being a good person, just live a good life. Make sure that whenever you meet anyone, whoever it is, that you leave them with a good taste in their mouth. That they say, wow, that Louis guy is such a nice guy. What a pleasure to meet him. I would like to see him again. That's how I try and go about my day. And a prime example of this, I'm not, I'm not gonna brag, but I would say my life goes so well now, especially now, because I'm, I'm nice to people. Like I go into Starbucks in the morning, everyone knows my name, everyone knows my order. They try and talk to me in Spanish. I try and talk to them in Spanish. Wherever I go, whenever I used to get airplanes everywhere, I used to get extra legroom seats for free. I used to get upgraded sometimes for free. I get free things in shops and stuff every now and then because I go out of my way to be nice to people and to ask them, how's their day? How are you? What have you been up to? Blah, 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 just to make them feel good. I like other people to make, to, I like to make other people feel good because it makes me feel good. And I think so many people are quite selfish and unaware. They keep themselves to themselves. They've got their headphones in. They don't want to talk to anyone else. They're not bothered by anyone else. They just don't care. And I think that's pretty sad. The world is all about making connections and meeting new people. And one thing that I notice is whenever I meet new people, even it can literally be a stranger on the metro. If, if they smile at me or they talk to me or they will have a nice little conversation, a nice little exchange, that makes me feel good. So I go about my day trying to make other people feel as good as I possibly can. Giving them a smile, giving them a cheeky wink. And I don't really do that. I'd get in trouble from Cindy if I was giving other people a wink. Like, just go and try and make other people's lives better, make it easier, put a smile on their face. That's what makes a good human being. And I try not to wrong other people. Try not to talk bad about anyone else. Let them get on with their business. Try and help them if you can. But if you don't have anything good to say about them, don't say anything about them. Let them deal with their life, you deal with your own life. I'm sure there's plenty of things that you can be working on for yourself. But yeah, that's it, pretty much. I think that wraps up today's Q&A. 23, 24 minutes there. I think we've covered some good stuff and we've multitasked. We've, we're outside Ronaldo's student house. Perfect timing. So guys, thanks for watching. I feel quite, feel good after that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, give me feedback. Let me know what you want to see. We've got like four videos left of this 30 day challenge and make sure to hit subscribe. I really appreciate it. Tell me if I should get a haircut or not. Drop a like on the video. Follow me on Instagram at Louis Armstrong 7. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.